And now, broadcast live in front of a live studio audience for the first time from the certified up to code WYZT studio, it's the Corny Collins Miss Hairspray Spectacular. He's Corny. Brought to you by Ultra Punch Hairspray. What gives a girl power and punch? Is it charm? Is it poise? No, it's hairspray. What gets a gal asked out to lunch? Is it brains? Is it dough? No, it's hairspray. If you take a ride with no can at your side, then your flip will be gone with the wind. But if you spray it and lock it, you can take off in a rocket and in outer space. Each hair will be in place. Why take it? Ladies! And gentlemen, O'Gears and Shadow Spawn, boys and girls of all ages, you know why you're here. It's the Wheel of Time podcast. Thank you for tuning in to this week's Dose of Madness. I am your master of ceremonies, your Tsorovan Mahil, Josh. Which that was a cue for someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, I was trying to think of some fancy things to say, and I literally came up. So you let me I, down, for, man. For today, I am your sin buoy. I am Andrew, <laughs> and I am your Amon Khan Mahale, uh, Daniel. Uh, and today, we need to throw on some protection before we get into just about anything, because we're already three deep into a lane. I think we're four deep. Well, this is the fourth. That actually sounds we're, different. We're three deep. She's got, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are solidly... There are three of us, and we are solidly three deep in a lane. Um, today wow. is the fourth. Uh, and there will be no fifth. There will we will we will finish this. We're gonna wrap this up because and I don't want to get too much into it, but we need to address a grievous sin in the Wheel of Time community at this moment in time. Dude, Grievous isn't even in the Wheel of Time community. He's <laughs> from Star Wars. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Hello there. Hello there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, yes. Uh, Wait, that's Watto. Spoiler Sorry, warning. <laughs> yes. Uh, so since we are already so deep into this particular subject, um, we are going to definitely need to throw on some super, super, super thick latex. Uh, we are getting into all of the series here. If you have not read all of the series, you are in danger of being spoiled. Uh we kept a lot of the first and second episode without like a ton of spoilers throughout the whole thing. Uh, but today we are actually, as I said, talking about some of the things that she contributed to um, the the last battle, things that happened to her both uh, before, during and after the last battle. Uh, and then we are going to be wrapping up our last thoughts on the character, which who knows where that's going to lead us. Therefore, please be careful. You have been warned. You oh, have boy. been warned. And this is it, guys. This is, I mean, when we say we're finishing off a lane, we're not saying we're never going to talk about a lane again. But nope, that's oh. what I was saying. No oh, more Elaine. She's never being mentioned even once. <laughs> this, we're actually just going we're to gonna talk bail about fire that away. trick hand girl. <laughs> we're never going to mention her ever again. Ever. Ugh, that, that slip of a trick hand I woman. I like Elaine. I really do, Dude, but... Ugh, stop. Ugh. There are times where I just want to throttle her. I feel like of all of the characters, she and Avienda would probably be the most into that. Uh, I like Elaine far more in the, in the late series. Um, call me a yes. nerd. Call me many things. I've been called many things over many times. But <laughs> nerd. The, I, many I actually things. enjoyed the politicking uh, that we that we got to saw Elaine doing and that we get to see her do pretty much throughout the, the remainder of the series. Um Oh, well, mainly because yeah. I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. I think it's interesting and entertaining. Uh, I don't want to read 14 books of it, 
<laughs> but you know, whenever he goes in there, to me, it helps accentuate a story. It helps bring a series, uh, a series into realism. Uh, well, I don't want to say into realism, but it adds a relatable aspect for me. Um, yes, because the yeah. no, we shit be Josh real. and I definitely talked about that a lot yeah. on the last episode uh, that we did discussed dimples and curls which does not mean that you cannot put in your two cents i would actually like to hear your two cents so please don't let that be a me cutting you off if i can find two however together real quick three however um i will say that my only i i loved the the politics josh loved the politics we were totally down for that my only issue was that it came at a very inopportune time in the series because had Rand been running around doing action-packed stuff, or not even Rand, let's not even make it a character. Had someone <laughs> been running around doing action-packed stuff. Some random stuff, farmer running around stabbing dark friends with his pitchfork. <laughs> you know what? Spinoff <laughs> series, here we come. The, the uh, no, but uh, anyone the running around... <laughs> <laughs> Played Farmer actually Ronin. also by Jeremy Renner. Um, yes! If there had been someone running around like doing action-packed things, and we had gotten you know either the rest of the book or like a third of a book or or whatever, even if you extended Elaine's politics, uh, you know, a number of books more, I would have been totally down. Except for the fact that again, it was chosen to do a opposite. Perrin. And unfortunately for so much of the time that you're listening to Perrin and he's walking through the snow, it's just so boring. Yeah. And then you have this other part that is actually very interesting but again, not very action packed. Not very yeah. like cinematic if you will. So my brain is kind of being like, alright, cool. Slog through snow slog through politics yeah. Yeah. i guess all i'm getting is slog. i mean i think rj knew that uh the fans <laughs> of the series were going to get tired and we're going to get kind of bored of uh parent's story there's no way he didn't think that at least a fair number of fans would and <laughs> even even while writing it so maybe the thought was that in comparison to the the just dr- literally dredging on moving slow part of parent and fucking fiel the yeah. damsel in distress story um wow. that maybe wow. the maybe Those the politics words. of elaine would be a nice breather and i, th- I think it is but it's no one i, of those I things that it's like it's not so you know like every 90 percent of people i would say enjoy action scenes and so right. you know, that stuff is almost universally like okay that's a good break you know from something that's boring or whatever but more right. and more people um People don't want to talk about politics, and to be fair, at least in America, it seems that a good uh, fucking seventy to ninety-eight percent of Americans can't even t- talk about politics anyway. But um, right, mm-hmm. it's not something that's that's universally enjoyed. Yeah, you have uh, serious contingents that do enjoy it, but even more so, a lot of people want like bare bones. Like the amount of politicking that you see in the Lord of the Rings movies is about as much as they want to see out of any of it. Right? Yeah. No, you're you're totally right. I think I think the thing that you know, and, and remember when we've done the reviews in the past, where we've said it's a it's an investment, right? You're making yeah. an investment. You're investing now, and your return comes in two books. You know, when you get to, uh, you know, well, a memory of light. I mean, that's the ultimate payoff, yeah. the ultimate climax, right. right there. That's the money shot, right? right. There. God, the ultimate That's climax. The money shit. But the uh, the cool thing about dude, the, I had to I have a cigarette what, after a mad memory. Light. <laughs> I think what I think the uh, what RJ was going for was, you know, I'm talking about like, hey, what up, RJ? Like me and him were on first name basis. <laughs> but I think what he was going not, for not not even a first name basis initials motherfucker Initial nickname basis yeah that's right we were toy we were toy toy like a toy toy gun. um g-o-i-g-h-t <laughs> toy but no you get um you get a situation in which people are you know fighting in 20 different directions and for us as a reader it it's very game of thrones-esque oh and yeah. what i mean by that is game of thrones i oh i couldn't do it i tried I couldn't do it. Right. I didn't care about anything. It was going 
in so many different directions. And a lot of people will say that about Wheel of Time. And and I can see their point to Depends. a certain degree. But with the Wheel of Time, what happens is first off, you get an actual introduction with people. <laughs> you don't just get a, oh, by the way, here's 400 people uh, <laughs> care about them right now. <laughs> Um, half of oh, them will and be dead. Sorry, as soon as you start caring about someone, they're dead. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I think realistically, <laughs> RJ could have taken and he could have cut back. You know, he could have shortened the the Perrin and Fael art. Uh, he could have shortened Elaine's art a bit, uh, and written the or at least set up his notes at least for the rest of the series, so that the entirety of a Memory of Light could have. I think realistically have been just before the last battle all the way through the last battle and a little after that. Yeah. Rather than kind of starting where it does, where it's still there, but it starts, I think he could have pushed where the book starts up so that we could have got more detail in the middle. We could have gotten to see, um, more with Pat and Fane. He could have been a more involved character. We could have got Ugh. more satisfaction. I what's happening than just, oh, I uh, agree with you there. He, he, he turned into smoke and he sank into the ground. It's like, you really expect us to believe he's dead? Um, no, but I think no, he's not. I think dead. He's coming more. back in the spinoff series, dude. Pat and Fane is Black Tower villain. I'm calling dude. it. I'm calling it right now. Pat and Fane comes back. Well, yeah. As of right now, I'm pretty sure when it comes to the Black Tower spinoff series, I'm pretty sure we're writing it right now, <laughs> dude. I'm. I already started it. Did you not see <laughs> my did. document? I, I saw it. I read it. I love it. Pat and Fane, <laughs> so desolation is, of Mashadar. <laughs> so what i'm uh, saying is when we uh when we when uh when prime amazon prime calls us to write for them <laughs> you mean calls daniel to write for them get it out. dude no it's gonna be all of us like again i threw that that document out there not oh, yeah. for you guys to fucking bow to my prowess it was for you guys to add your that. fucking ideas <laughs> I, I will say this. I will say this when it comes to and both of you already started brainstorming, like you know, things that needed to happen and like I'm cool a, shit yeah. that was like stuff. I'm I'm in. And I thought about I it. I haven't said in. anything yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna read even what you wrote if, again. And, and Andrew and Josh, I don't know your writing capabilities just because I haven't seen it, and I'm not. That is not a a uh, an impeachment of your abilities. That is not a questioning of your abilities. I just haven't seen it, but. I don't know. I even like if you are not actually like super good at writing screen, even if that's true or anything like that, I am going to bring the two of you in as my fucking Soravan well, and Baijan Mahal. Something actually that could be kind of cool. Like series. like each one of us like creates a a character that would take place in this post uh, last battle world. And that was that was exactly what I was. Yeah. Asking. And like, like take terms like yeah, writing anything? chapters for each character. I mean, because I mean, then you have three different characters. I mean, you have more characters than that because they interact with others. But I mean, yeah, already like the one that I had, I made up. I want to say like four characters, but I also brought in like four or yeah. five other characters. So, again, just I love the ability to create and also pull because Pulling is so much fun and it's so satisfying right. to really get in that thing. And uh, I, I, there, there was a little like a uh, brain bug in my head. Um, and, and I went back to the wiki and Quellar uh, is the name of one of the Ashaman in the last battle. Nice. And so I used his name, and one of the things that it says is that uh, Androl Genhald, all, all that it says about Quellar is that Androl leaves his knife with Quellar to be sharpened. That's the whole fucking thing. That is the entire like <laughs> page of Quellar. And I remembered that like again there was this character who like didn't have much and if you like go through all of the the different Ashaman that are, you know, hanging out and doing stuff at the at and around the last battle, like it'll tell you every single named Ashaman. And it's it's fantastic. Anyway, <laughs> so all of this. No kidding, no shit. All we know about Quellar is that Andrel's belt knife was at his place in the Black Tower perimeter nope. 
waiting right? to be sharpened. Right? That's all it says. That's it. It's so good. It so shows good. up on the battlefield. I sharpened your knife, oh, my lord. Shit. Stab, stab, stab. <laughs> Well, in the stab, in the stab, fucking stab. story, he yeah. stabs Leems with it. Yeah. Ugh. So I will anyway. get. I will get. Um, I, I'm gonna get back. First off, I'm gonna get back on topic, which is weird for me. Um, but I will say we that have a I topic? agree. I agree with you, Andrew. On we could have done with less Fail. Um, because I don't hate Fail, but at the same time, I don't love her. And I just ugh, the whole slog just just, just makes us like kills me when you first meet file and everything. A lot of people love her, but the whole slog just it's like being over. It's like being told you yeah. can eat only chocolate and like you love chocolate yeah. and it's cool at first. Nom, 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 nom. And then just after a certain point, you're just like in a fucking coma yeah. because you're so sick and tired of chocolate. <laughs> and in this scenario, so, file is fucking chocolate. <clears throat> Well, and and again, like up, to her credit, she's yeah, so yeah. good. She is actually a really good character. Yeah. Where and like I... it's actually kind of funny because I am the opposite with Fail. Like right at first, I think she is annoying as all get out. I'm so over her in like her first fucking twenty <laughs> chapters. Ugh. See, if she gets think, mentioned in one of the the chapters where she gets mentioned like the first twenty times, I'm like die in a fire. However, by the time you actually get to the slog, I am like in Fail's camp. But then I like lose it so hard because I'm just like Fail, you're great. Stop. I don't care. Yeah, I mean, th- there's but a, it's also funny. There's a, a good uh, number of these characters I, that. Fuck! I didn't mean to talk over you. Sorry. No, no, you're good. <laughs> Finish your thought. Um, well, there's a good many of these characters that they seem to be written from a perspective where, like, uh, where Jordan could just see himself like shouting from his fucking kitchen, like, "Get the fuck off my lawn!" <laughs> <laughs> Fail, send Bowie. Lawn. Get the fuck off my lawn. <laughs> so, no, but I, one I, more I agree thought with you. about all of that. I I do want to th- also throw out that the saddest part about this log is that it kind of couldn't be written any other way. Just because hey, if you yes. actually look at the books, and if you actually look at the climactic pieces of what happens in, uh, you know the the three maybe four books that are actually like really sort of designated as the slog. Right. All of those are in a certain order that makes absolute sense when you put it all together. And if you have two to four like super climactic events that you want as the endings to books, because it's boring as shit to go ahead and not actually have a climax. That's just Pirates of the Caribbean 2. Like, it's not satisfying for anybody. Blue balls you've ever had in your life. Right? Exactly. And so given that you have like only a certain number of super climactic events, it makes absolute sense the order in which they are placed in, the books mm-hmm. in which they are placed, and the way that the books crescendo to an end. You know what I do but now? But it also means get... that the rest of the whole fucking book is so boring! You know what I do now whenever a nice lady leaves me with blue balls? You you watch know... Pirates of the Caribbean? No. You know that uh that uh, why do you build me up buttercup baby song? Why uh-huh. you just start do playing you it. Build me up, <laughs> buttercup baby just to let me down. No, I, like, what? you be like, over oh, at ten, you say time and again, and you're here, <laughs> but then you so leave where, again. <laughs> where I disagree with you, Andrew, is Ooh, when you say we could have less Elaine. And don't get me wrong, uh, I. Mm, I have feelings about Elaine, okay? I do. I mean, don't we all? They set her up. I get a tingle in my black tower when I think about Elaine. (laughs) (laughs) They set her up to be a huge part of the story, like in book one. Oh, absolutely. When they talk about Elida attaching herself to the throne of Andor, because Andor Andor was key to winning at Tarman Gaiden. Mm -hmm. So I feel like also not only that, but I feel like Andor is like the most well-established kingdom in a, a common society. 
Now, I say a yeah. common society. And no, what you're I right. Shinar's is there I'm like, not... am I a fucking joke to you? <laughs> no, no. And that's that's what I was just getting ready to specify is I'm not going to yeah. go with the Borderlands because they've all got, I wouldn't consider them common society because all of them, they grow up, they have one purpose. You are now fodder to fight back the shadow spawn well, they, they, they fight back live the in reality they don't like get that's it like that's their only it. purpose and for well for and, and i would years, actually that's all agree. they've done i would actually still even agree that in the books sorry i i thought you were saying something different and i'm gonna i'm gonna agree with what i thought you were saying and explain <laughs> it so oh, you're, that you're you gonna understand. agree with what you thought cool <laughs> i mean i also agree with what you're saying now but when it comes right down to it, all of the Emmonsfield Five are from Andor. Again, only by map. This fucking big dick but energy. At the same I agree time, with what I interpreted that... you were saying. <laughs> oh, fuck myself. Uh, but anyway, uh, all of the Emmonsfield Five and whatnot like come out of the two rivers, which is in Andor, and then they explore a buttload of Andor, and then end up in Camelin. And then explore more of Andor and end up in, you know, a bunch of different places. And then, of course, we just see so much of Andor hierarchy with Elaine. We see a bunch of cities in Andor and whatnot. And while I do not want to diminish in any way Robert Jordan's intense descriptions and and ex explanations of Aiel culture, of Borderlands culture, of Kyrianan culture, of Ilian culture, of Terra Boner culture, all of those are satisfactory. Right. But they're not nearly as deep a dive as Robert Jordan really does with Andor, which is actually what I thought you were saying as far as it is the most well-described society. And also, what you were actually saying, uh, it is, without a doubt, the most well-described uh, common uh, civilization or sect, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I So I see where you're going with that. I, 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 if I hear you correctly, what I hear you saying is that the reason and or is so uh, for, forward in our minds and so front of our minds is because the Emmonsfield Five are Andorans and they spend a lot of time in Camelin and they always seem to come back to Camelin. And there was like five cities that they really jump around and they don't really dive deep into a lot of culture in a lot of other places. Correct. I mean, they'll However, do a little bit of a dive into, like, Shinaran culture, where, like, again, you do get the idea that, you know, men are not allowed in the women's apartments, the the women are strong, the men are good looking, and the children are above, above average, uh, and that, you know, carry in in the, the, the game of houses. <laughs> Did you not actually get that reference? Uh, I didn't, but I am also, oh, I am half You don't listen dead. to enough NPR, apparently. Because that was a Lake Wobegon <laughs> reference. Dude, that's the weirdest insult ever. <laughs> you don't listen to enough NPR. <laughs> you that was not an insult at all. It was a truth. Out of it's, like a modern, not an it's like a modern version of you uncultured swine. <laughs> Incorrect. You have plenty of culture, just not the same culture <laughs> as me. <laughs> Ooh, very peaceful. You have response. plenty of culture, well, my good wonder. friend. Just unfortunate that it's all in the form of bacteria. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I, but it is interesting that, again, like one of the things that I would absolutely fucking love is to pour over Robert Jordan's notes or or maybe if he didn't actually get them all down in notes, you know, his brain, which I know is not possible. I'm not saying this Frozen as a practical like thing. I'm just saying it as a, you know, wonderful thing to do is what the fuck are the rules? For Deus de Mar. There are what no the rules. fuck? All right. No, there are rules. Are you kidding no, me? There are no absolutely rules. rules. People break them regularly, but there absolutely should be rules of engagement. <laughs> and you goddamn know Robert Jordan knew them. Like Deadpool 2. Rules are made to be broken. That's the exact opposite of what they're meant for. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, I, all I of this say... to come back to the subject. So, so say what you're gonna say. I, I feel like and I and I, I, I get where you're going, right? You you think that 
you're saying that because Andor is central to many, uh, it is, it's central. It's a central location to many of the plot points in the story. And therefore we perceive it as being more well-established, uh, than other countries simply because, you know, it's, it's where we're, we're always in Andor. Well, and and not even would... even above that, if that wasn't already true, which I think it would have been, going into Elaine's story and really taking a deep dive into the houses of Andor and the yeah. royal well... uh, succession of Andor and the politics of Andor again... and all of this different stuff really cements that being true. Even if it wasn't already true beforehand. Well, and you're you're not wrong there. They do go into that. But again, that's part of the story. Elida's foretelling says that victory at Tarman Gaidan is key. You know, the, the, the Andoran crown, the Andoran throne is key to victory at Tarman Gaidan. So we project Agreed. that Andor is going to be central to our story. And maybe In I just fair made Verona, your point. where we lay our scene. May and and maybe I just made your point. And and if I did, that I mean cool. That just means we agree and we didn't know it. Hey oh. But Yeah, no, we just feel like, we just shook hands. I feel from like, across um, the like country. Ebu Dar, they're always fighting with Terabon. You know, uh or wait. Yeah, that's Ebudar. He's know. just staring don't, at it, just staring me. at a map and he's like squinting really hard. Yeah, yeah, that's Ebudar. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> right there. No, um Yeah, no, that's what it is. Arid, yeah. Anyway. Aridoman and Tarabon. Yeah, Aridoman. There it is. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I knew it. I knew it. Ebudar is a city. Aridomon is the country. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, but, you know, and then you've got Saldea, Kandor, Arafel, and Shinar. And they're all like, oh, yeah, we're borderlanders. We're badass. They don't ever really fight each other because they're too busy fighting. Well, because who the fuck would fight each other? The borderlands. When... I mean, exactly. as much as I don't agree with uh, Ozymandias. And I am not an Ozymandias did nothing wrong kind of camper. <laughs> he absolutely is right that if you have a bigger enemy than all of your neighbors, you don't fucking fight your neighbors. Humanity unites under the banner of a common enemy. They do. Yes. They really do. I mean, that's they just, really that's, do. And, and Robert Jordan understood that. And as a result, Saldea, Condor, Ar- Arafel, and Shinar didn't really i mean they developed in ways of war oh yeah that's what they did and so as a result don't fuck with saldea kandor arafel or shinar <laughs> right they know how to fight well okay. and bringing that back into the foreground of our topic i do absolutely fucking love how elaine uses that to her benefit mm-hmm she absolutely goes, hey, look, Shinar, Arafel, Saldea, and, you know, the the any Kendall. other small country in in the Borderlands is sending a contingent of troops through our borders. Right. Close the borders, build the wall, the Borderlands will pay for it. <laughs> like <laughs> I just love her political power move with Kyrian. So, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Like, it's almost like every time I read it and I think about it to me, it's like every time she thinks about like she's got Andor now and she's like, all right, I've got this cover. I've got the Lion Throne. I've got the Rose Crown. You know, I got on my own what Rand said he was going to give me fucking wool headed bastard. And she's like, but <laughs> I can be a little extra petty and just go into Kyrian and just rip out the leadership from his stewards. Right. And she does. No, it makes me come a little fantastic. bit every single time I hear about it. And I'm like, so, th- so that I, I think just like, a little bit. I think the main purpose, um, and this is like the finish up, I guess, my thoughts on the, the politicking and stuff is Elaine has already been established as a uh, one of the most powerful Aes Sedai, one of the most talented Aes Sedai, and nobody questions that. Right. 
but everybody has something else that they're established in. Like, um, mm -hmm. you know, pick any character and they have multiple things that they're really good at. You know, Matt's obviously very Correct. lucky. He also becomes a very uh, accomplished, very well-versed uh, strategist in general. Uh, Rand has his OP laundry list of things that he's good at because he is who he is. Uh, and he's got the the armor of the plot. You put on the whole armor of the plot. There's a there's a little whoa 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 um, whoa no. whoa whole how armor dare of you? It is called Taviran in this book. It's Taviran armor. Close enough. Close enough. You know what? Same idea. Let's take a moment and think about the brilliance of Robert Jordan. He's like, I've got three main characters that must survive to the last battle. Um, <gasps> Taviran. They shape natural the world plot there. armor. Uh, it's then you just get... a thing that happens to people sometimes. <laughs> but then you get to a lady. Well, and I also that's what he did. And it carries that brilliant on. bastard wrote plot armor into the story. Well, and let's just take one one single solitary moment to just appreciate how a awesome that is, and b how uh, on its head that gets turned uh -huh. in the book series. Because oh, again, yeah. when he writes it that way. You kind of sit there as a reader being like, oh, okay, cool. Well, then they don't really have a choice and the pattern is going to work itself around them and they'll yep. just always be fine. But is it that or is it that they're rewriting the pattern around them to well, always be fine? Who fucking knows? And that is one of the most brilliant pieces of writing yes. because it still gives an out. It's not just... Okay, Rand is always gonna be fine because Taviran. It's this Rand is always gonna be fine because Taviran, or is it because Taviran Rand is always gonna be fine? And you're like, what the fuck? Well, not only that, but what was something we talked about last episode when we were talking about Elaine when she gets cocky? Oh, my mm -hmm. babies are gonna be born, yeah. so I, I'm gonna survive no matter what happens. And then she gets captured by the Black Aja, and they're like, "Oh, my, my sweetheart, we're not going to kill you. We're going to take your children." And she, in that moment, realizes, "Oh shit, there are things worse than death." Yeah, and I feel I'm like sorry. Are the Black Aja Christoph Waltz? Because I'd be totally <laughs> down for that casting. <laughs> I mean, yes. Anyway, oh, now they are. We are not going to take your life. We are going to take your children. And and then Django, you have, you have, your wife's Rand, name is Brumhilda. Brumhilda von Schaft. <laughs> then you have, you have. Uh, Wait, Rand, your children's like... names are Rand Junior and Elaine Junior. This is so stupid. I don't. The, uh, we're going to take of both the, of your children. The movie has some of the best dialogue. Like, and he's she Dude, doomed to be so there good. until a hero arises. Well, does he arise? Yes, he does. <laughs> Dude, I, my roommate just rewatched that the other day, and I came in at the point where. Um, they they were just going over to Candy's Ranch, uh -huh. and it's a fantastic fucking movie. Oh, yeah. Dude, just watch anyway, that movie's there. amazing. Back to topic. But what anyway, I was thinking about Elaine. Back to topic. Um, <laughs> is from from the slog on, like Rand has already said that she's uh, a fantastic that she would be a fantastic ruler. That she's already a very fantastic noble. That she understands and get how it is, and that's all we get for the most part is just basically some pseudo exposition about her prowess in politics. So right. all the actions we see her, her claiming her throne in Andor solidifies that it's not just him interpreting that she's a good ruler. It's not just people thinking it's because of her lineage and her upbringing that she must be a good ruler. It's Elaine showing that not only is she a good ruler, She's an insanely powerful and great ruler She's and an tactician. Exceptional ruler, yes, right. Because like she, like, even whenever she, whenever she's making uh, all the deals for support from Kyrian, um, you know she's she's using some of what she's learned as an Aes Sedai. She's being uh, manipulative while still being uh, fair, fairly honest. Um, right. And she knows that, like, they're only agreeing because, based on the agreement, they have a chance to overthrow me or take mm -hmm. back the throne for themselves in the coming years. Right. And as soon as they're like, yeah, we'll do it. And she's like, great, fantastic. 
every uh, single person that you have there, every every man, not person, sorry, every man, because the draft is still male exclusive. Um, if we want to talk about unfair gender gender things, um, <laughs> gets conscripted. Different, different episode. It's cons- different. Oh, I'm not different talking about it now. Episode. But every every man in, in the Kyrian uh, Dude, lands we can do another four episodes on just that. Gets conscripted into the army and is oh, now man. going off to war. I was being conservative. Very uh, funny. I get it. Even <laughs> I will say this too. Elaine even addresses that. Her personal bodyguard are females. She has a female warder. And okay, but okay. So, so, so just throwing out there, that's not really female a warder. <laughs> female warder was more out of necessity than anything else. But hey, hey, bodyguards, a hundred percent, not. <laughs> that was a choice. That was a choice. I don't know. I with kind of where I was going with the Taviran thing too. Elaine did all this. Without being Tavira. Okay. The only surety that we had that Elaine would survive. We, well, we, I guess we have two sureties. Well, no, we only have one is that she would give birth. That's it. That's the only surety we know that she would survive. We don't have any surety that she would be okay at the end of that, or that she wouldn't die shortly after childbirth. So in a way, Elaine is more capable or more courageous knowing that she's not Taviran and that when she works, when she works towards a goal or when she works towards something, it's her wits. It's just her. She doesn't have a twisting of the pattern helping her like Rand, Matt and Perrin do. Perrin kind of ignores it. He's just like, yeah, whatever. I I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. It doesn't exist. Rand is like, well, I'm Taviran, right? So I can run in to this uh, hold of screaming Aiel and come out just fine because I'm Taviran and I'm going to survive on the last battle. And then he learns that, again, he learns the same lesson of there are things way worse than death. Matt is the one that seems to understand that I'm a bloody Taviran and I flaming hate it. I just want to be a normal person. I want to go into a, a bar and play yeah. dice and lose every once in a while. I think that'd be pretty cool. But Elaine and a bunch of the other characters in there, they say, I don't have a twisting of the fates to help me through this. Either I succeed or I fail. So I have to be on my A game. I have to do this right the first time. I won't get a second chance. And in that sense, Elaine is scary. I mean, she is scary. She is good at what she does and the the whole uh you know book nine and book ten her uh ascension to the throne yeah it can be a bit dry at parts but if you look at it from a perspective of yeah Tarman Gaiden is right around the corner and we really need to secure the throne and get people united so that we can jump up and uh, help at the last battle it it kind of gives an air of desperation to it because it's like the sooner she can get this thing done, the sooner we can start marshalling our forces for time and guidance, but she can't rush it. These are not things that can be rushed. These are things that still must be done the same way and the right way the first time. And so in that sense, Elaine is mind blowingly amazing truth no it, it you actually just reminded me uh have you guys ever seen the it, while overall it was a crap ass movie uh the new hercules movie with Dwayne the rock johnson <laughs> yes there's a character in right. that who's was fantastic terrible. but it was awesome terrible uh and i don't remember the actor's name i i'm gonna have to look it up um but he he knows when he's going to die. And uh and so he keeps on going into like battlefields and like running out into fucking flaming arrows and whatnot. And he's just standing there being like today's the day and every single time it doesn't happen. 
And that is what I imagine is like what being a Tivian is like. That is pl- that is played by Ian McShane. Ian McShane. And there we go. Thank you very I'm much. Gonna, I'm gonna throw some shade right now because, bro, Ian McShane is he's fucking huge. Okay, he's Dude, huge. Why? I love Ian McShane. Okay, Josh. And I was not going Trump there. Josh. I was going Philly. I was going Philly. Josh. Josh. What? what? Eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> I love Ian McShane as well. I just forgot hey. his goddamn name. Oh, right. I'm not the one who forgot his name. I'm just saying, you know, whatever. Oh, because cool. Josh would never forget a fucking name here and there. I've, I've never. I would never. Anyway, Elaine. Anyway, um, uh, we actually have talked about the last battle about a billion times in this podcast. Uh, and I'm sure that yeah. we will talk about it again. Uh, but as for it, in this. No exception. Yes. So. That's that's kind of what we have not. I mean, there, and so I would like to go ahead and delve that are, into that are those, lane specific, but I would not necessarily probably, like to go I don't into, think we delved into a thorough rehash of the last battle. I think we should yeah. talk about Elaine centric things and then kind of get into our final <laughs> thoughts, because uh, I think Anything that'll actually legitimately hilarious. take the next 30, 40 minutes. Well, so here's the deal. Yeah. So Elaine was where we left off last time was Elaine ran out to take on the black Aja. They captured her. They gave her her lesson in, you know, prophecy doesn't always work out the way you want it to. She escapes, but as she escapes, she finds out the rest of the Andoran nobles have marshaled their forces and are marching against Camelin and they're breaking down the gates. And she's like, well, shit, she ends up in a decisive battle winning, thus securing the crown and the throne. And that's where we left off. Correct. Last time. Last time on Black Tower Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and we've already kind of talked about her whole episode. We already kind of talked about her whole episode of how she, uh, while being queen of Andor, becomes the queen of Kyrian mm-hmm. as well, um, which of course brings us up to uh, what you can consider the the starting phases of the last battle. Um, it's in that time, like we've said before, that Camelin falls to uh, one of the armies of the Shadow, and talking with some friends right. and also using her training and judgment, she's like abandon the city they have it for now we'll reclaim it later but there's more important things to do um then we have the whole sit down for the dragon's piece where elaine is uh the last of the westlanders at least to sign the dragon's piece um and she is equally as apprehensive about the terms and everything about it and much like every other ruler they're like go fuck yourself (laughs) man just go fight and do your job and leave Mo you know Rain's world politics back. to us all right and the moraine's dee like dee i'm dee back dee bitches dee get your heads dee out of your asses dee dee dee. uh and listen and they all kind of give in and elaine even though elaine was was never colored like Egwene was she still has serious feelings like like you could reasonably expect about the sean chan and is like ultimately i'll uh, like okay i'll sign it for Andor and Kyrian on the condition that the Sean Chan Empress does as well. Um, and she has this, uh, she has a Fajita moment where she's frustrated by Rand for his demands, but also extremely proud of what he's, what he's drawn up and uh, just how he's conducting himself, himself as a ruler. Um, because <laughs> here, you know, they're, they're seeing, of course, Zen Rand at this Ain't point. Where time for your shit. Listen like, here, motherfucker. Yeah, we, we got shit to do. We don't have time for all this. Like, <laughs> this is what we need. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But um, she's also impressed uh, at his rationale behind uh, nominating her to be the uh, the supreme commander, the commander in chief of the forces of the light. 
Yeah. Uh, and he makes, you know, excellent points. It's like, you know, true story. One of the great captains has literally tutored her most of her almost her entire current life on battle tactics from a command perspective. So, uh, and it turns out to, to be an amazing choice. Um, because, you know, they set forth their battle plan. You know, she's talking. She's got the best counsel you can ha you can ask for. Um, she's got all the great captains working. Uh, all the advisors. Uh, pretty much every noble wants to be a part of the discussions as they make their battle plans. Um, Go about your business. And we've already talked about how they <laughs> get, get divided up into four main fronts. These are not the droids you're looking for. They go about for. their business. These are not the droids we're looking for. He can go about his way. So... Yeah. So. Yeah. So she does something ingenious, um, when she's looking that, at their at tactics the for retaking Kamlin, the because they don't want the Trollocs to have a base to launch attacks like at the rear of the location. forces of light. Um. Yeah. So. She orders that oil that they've already gotten from Maine, um to be poured into the basement of hundreds of buildings throughout the entire city. Then gets the kinswoman to open up gateways and then tells everybody, all right, this sir, set the oil on fire. Is on fire. And she, she sets her own city on <laughs> this fire. This is to a massive on fire. tactic that was used to great effect by the Russians in World War I. And it's then... Fun story. Is that yeah. a fun story? It is a fun story. Or just an <laughs> accurate story. It was then that he's not the daddy, but Daddy Davram Bashir. Uh, da so Daddy Davram uh, convinces Elaine to declare publicly that she's carrying Rand's unborn children. Um, and of course, Rand shows up at the Andorran Warfront to meet with Elaine. Uh, they're talking about how everything's going, uh, the tactics, the art of ruling. Kind of looks like uh, a baby. And, you know, now Rand has heard that she is carrying his Get babies. In my and so, of course, it's a topic of conversation. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. So. It's at then that point which that Rand cool gives her well. a seed, which of course is a Terran girl, which is used to create Angriol. Cool as um, fuck. And All right. Kind of an yeah, yeah. And then in return, Elaine gives him the uh, somewhat infamous dull dagger. So mm -hmm. the dagger that, uh, while which he's in possession of it, he's invisible to Shadow Spawn, awesome. including Merdral and Trollocs. Um. And Avian is like, maybe even the Dark One can't see you. And we're all like, eh. But it comes in super handy. Super handy. Um, <laughs> handy. Get it? Because yeah. you hold it with your so, hands. <laughs> they get all the Trollocs uh, out. Um, They get all the Trollocs. Jesus Christ. So they get all the Trollocs out of Camelin. They get the enemy into the Bram Woods. Um... And the initial ranks, uh, the two rivers shines with their bows and takes Alundra. down the initial ranks. And then the dragons, the Durgans, the, uh, Mats, the and, Durgans, the name Aludra's, uh, invention. The, yeah, they're dragons and they, they just, they decimate the rest of the Trollocs, uh, and win the battle. Uh, and that's when, you know, reports start flooding in, of course, that land has been pushed out of Tarwin's Gap. And the flow of battle uh, continues. Uh, eventually, Elaine and her forces reach Kyrian, uh, just before a Trolloc army that's attacking there. Um, she gives a nice stirring. Well, she also uh, already she did her, uh, her inner general MacArthur. Sherman impersonation um, earlier. Yeah, General Sherman. G general right. Sherman, just lighting. The city on fire. Okay, cool. Just, just, just I already made a reference about that, though, Daniel. You're kind of behind. Sure, man. <laughs> anyway. I'm not going to make a comment on that. <laughs> Fucking war crimes. Before there was a Geneva Convention. But, um, so this right. is, this is kind of when we get to see the dragons being put to, like, their best use, right? 
we get to see how effective the dragons really are and just the devastating effect that they're having on the Trolloc enemies. enemies. Um, to the point where Elaine is sickened by how effective it is. Um, well, she, she understood which just how makes me powerful like, <laughs> these things were if you could almost see a nuke. instantly. Because um, when Matt came in and was like, hey, my girl Eludra and I, we got these dragons. And she's like, I'll take 28. I mean, she was like <laughs> right there. She's like, I need all the dragons now. But then you, it's just like, you well, said, I mean, like, after you get one dragon, you're going to want to. <laughs> hey, oh. Giggity. Yeah. <laughs> but so she she sees that that Davram is is there's something going on with Davram initially thinks that he's been a dark friend or became a dark friend and orders his arrest. She's trying to, to marshal her forces and hold out against uh, Trolloc armies attacking on two fronts. Uh, and just uh, as is always, when everything feels lost, a contingent of Ashaman led oh, by no man. no other than Loghain, uh, they show up and they're linked. Uh, Andral's with them and using uh he's linked with 12 men and 14 women and uses his talent to open just mm. an insanely massive gateway to dragon yes. Knot and just pours lava so all good. over the trolloc army it's amaze balls it's such a good scene yeah. so it's then that uh, elaine and the other commanders they're like okay all the great captains have been compulsed uh, and Teleron Riyadh by uh, Forsaken. They're like, we need a new great captain. Yep. Which Compulsed. sucks. Uh, oh, dude, they're like, we need a new hard. A new great captain general. Or hard captain in the general. ball hole. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, we need someone new to take over. And uh, Elaine, Egwene, and uh, Tuan all agree to choose Matt or Fortuona, as she is known now. Uh, they choose Matt because he has the fox head medallion. They're like, well, he's protected, so he can't be. Come on, he can't be. Yeah. He can't fall. Not only that, but they, they know what a genius and that's he when, is on the battlefield. Yeah. So uh, that's when we see the forces regroup to uh, Marilor, uh, and just after the start of the battle, uh, Matt changes plans again because he suspects that there's traitors. Uh, Elaine gets super pissed. Um, but and she's trying to reach out to him, but you know, there's attacks from Drakkar and all that are destroying soldiers and everything because you know, the Drakkar they can right. sing or chant or whatever in an entrance, kind of like a song. mermaid song or the, the song, song of sirens. I mean, mermaids, that's true. You're not mermaids, wrong. do it as well. Um, and sailor lore, so kind of the same idea. Um, so she weaves a, a massive weave to deafen sound. Uh, and after her ear, her ears uh, themselves have to get healed by a domain. Um, she shows up in typical fashion. Like she always does Matt and demands an explanation. Right. What is the meaning uh, of this, Matt? And then after he explains. What is once, the meaning of uh, this, Elaine, Matt? Well, not, well, not the first time. <laughs> yeah. So... To be fair, not the first time she listens to Matt, but fortunately, she actually listens to Matt. And like after he's like, "This is why," she's like, "I agree." Yeah. Um, because you know her 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 ball is dropping. She gets a very bassy voice in that moment. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Matt from Gotham, what is the meaning of this? <laughs> hey, yo, Matt, yeah. what's uh, um, what's the fucking meaning of this? So it's then that the, uh, Malar and his group of mercenaries, uh, they're, of course, disguised as refugees. They ambush Elaine and Brigitte uh, and kill most of the guard. Uh, Malar then kills Brigitte and captures Elaine. Um, oh, dude, spoilers. They try to demoralize. Dude, we already have spoiler a thick warned. layer of latex. If you Calm didn't yourself. already know, then shame on you for not listening to our spoiler warning at the beginning of the episode. Yarp. Also, sorry, Andrew, for yeah. interrupting. That was so, just an important moment. <laughs> no, you're fine. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, so Malara's doing this whole uh, 
propaganda campaign. He has a corpse that looks similar to Elaine, slings over a saddle, tries to convince her entire armies that she's dead. Meanwhile, she's trying to channel to save herself, and he it's not affecting him because he has stolen a fox and medallion. And he starts trying to um, forcibly abort her children by cutting them out. And because Brigitte is a hero of the horn, uh, even though she died, when the horn is blown, yes. she returns and saves Elaine. Um, and they have a little back and forth chit chat and uh, Elaine shows, hey, I'm actually not dead. I'm I, stronger than that. I have to say this is yeah. one part of the series that I was super happy with. Because one of the things when when Mogedian rips uh, Brigida out of Teleronriad, it was a terrifying moment. I mean, this is one of the legendary heroes of the Horn, and we don't know what the hell's happening right now. There are no, there's no protocol, there's no rules for this. She is Brigida Silverbow as the legendary Brigitte Silverbow now in the real world. And that's not supposed to happen. She's an archetype. She's supposed to be an archetype rewoven. I into wish the, the real, real as world would just stop hassling me. Now you could say that the wheel weaves bra and that Brigitte was meant to be ripped from Teleronio and thus was meant to serve as Elaine's warder for that amount of time before the last battle, which I like. I like that school of thought. But to know that yep. the will, the will weaves bra, <clears throat> get your the will weaves bra merch at <laughs> that's right. dot com forward slash Black Tower right. Podcast. If you would like to own your own piece <clears throat> of merch that says the wheel weaves bra, you can. Sorry, I had That's something stuck in my happen. throat. Uh, was it a shameless that? plug? Called a shameless plug. That was, and it was, yep. it was like applicable too. It worked. Not to it be confused worked. with the butt plug. Wait, what? Jesus. <laughs> what? So to see Brigitte return with the horn, I feel like there's a butt plug out there that says on it "shameless plug." I oh, I would not Why? be surprised. I'm googling it right now. Son I of a bitch. <laughs> anyway. Brigida comes back and that was just, that was such a triumphant moment for me. Like I was so happy to know that the, uh, I don't know that the wheel definitely does weave. And that when she came back, that she was not a, she was not lost to the pattern like and that and that's really mm -hmm. where i got the most jubilation that was one of their big concerns was it because yes. she was ripped out that she wasn't going to be a hero and, of the and, that's, anymore? and i i absolutely loved that it was safe you know she she came back as a hero of the horn and that made me very very happy <laughs> yeah um you are shameless. so to kind of finish out to kind of finish out her story um she's relieved like she's annoyed but she's relieved that Birgitta took the decision about the horn of valir out of her hands by you know telling oliver to uh to throw it somewhere nobody would look a place that he could even forget preferably the ocean um, which is fantastic. Some random D and D party <laughs> playing five E, but in the wheel of time, we'll find it. No doubt. Yes. Um, either that or a and hobbit then will she's, be fishing she's in the river and might pull it out. Yeah. And then get killed oh, by God. his best friend who wants it. True. It's because it's our birthday, <laughs> and we <really> want it. <laughs> But, um, so she's there on the field of Merlor when Rand is, or who they think is Rand. Uh, obviously, uh, Elaine, Avienda, men know better already, but, uh, Rand's 
body and to everybody else. It seems like Rand is brought back for healing. Uh, ultimately, it fails and he dies. And it is noted, uh, I think by several, that Elaine, Avi, and Amen show no grief when <clears throat> he dies. And at the funeral pyre, you know, they kind of get this, you know, cool guys yes. don't look at explosions. That was the exact to walk energy away energy of that scene. I agree. Yeah. You know, the the world is grieving because to them the the guy that could have been Satan or Savior turned out to be Savior, and in the moment he was truly that Savior, he dies. Um, and they know that in reality he hasn't died. But um, they can't say anything and because they're off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thor, Nobody wants that you kind got of some explaining to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if they say anything, someone's going to be like, how? I broke you. <laughs> ah. I so made the climb. Your ghoul is your ally. <laughs> ah, so you think oh, Shaideen so. is your ally? Oh, there you go. You only adopted the power. I was born in it. Molded <laughs> by it. By it. I That's didn't great. see the pattern until I was already a man. And by then, <laughs> it was blinding. No, so, yeah. you know, again, but Elaine does... That's, that, that's, that's, pretty, much that's pretty much it. Like, once the final battle kind of kicks off, for her... Once Trollocs start pouring through that way gate, like her story arc becomes massively reactive. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not, I don't mean that in a bad way, but it is. She says, shit, shit, we've got Trollocs. Do the things. Okay, cool. Shit, shit, we've got dark friends. Do the thing. Okay, cool. Shit, shit, what the hell is Matt doing? Do the thing. Like, I think, I think you're very, very accurate when you start talking about it's nice to see Elaine as a commander because that's exactly what she is in these moments is you see her in the previous books she's running off adventuring having adventures as an Aes Sedai and she's loving it and she's putting herself on the front lines and she's putting herself in danger and there's something to be said for that because as a leader as a commander your followers want to know that you can relate to them. They want to know that you know what it's like to be on the front lines. But something that Elaine does, not quite so gracefully, but eventually she does do it very, very well. She makes the transition from frontline soldier to commander. And that's not an easy transition to make. There's a lot of people that have a lot of problems making that transition. She does it very, very well. Once she actually makes the transition, she takes to her new role very, very well and is able to lead a successful campaign, successful in her efforts that, you know, all contribute back to the effort of humanity at Tarman Gaiden. And she is able to put forth a pretty damn good effort. Agreed. So, Elaine is actually pretty awesome, but I still don't like her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, mean, I, I knew it was like coming, her. and I'm not even, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't not like her. I just, Oh, it's like it's not it, that I don't like it. It's just that I don't like it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The thing is, is she's so good in some areas. I mean, her, and and I think I think how I feel about her in a strange sense makes her more real as a character because I mean uh, that's how people are, right? I mean, your best friend in the world. You could be talking to him and he could say some shit that make you be like, wait, what the hell did you say that for? Or, I mean, it's just, that's how people are. We're, we're very complex machines. We're complex animals. And we say things, we do things. Wait, are we animals or machines? Good. Yes. Oh, 
fuck? <laughs> but it's or, you got or the as dog uh, going. yeah, uh, or as uh, yeah. as Carl Sagan uh, would say, the the, the it's, way it's that dog the goes molecular machinery of life, right? The way that dog goes, the dog's name is Koa. <laughs> Koa. He, if he's outside, he barks at the the first leaf that moves. If he's inside, he barks at the slightest flicker of light. <laughs> hey, you motherfucking leaf! Don't even. <laughs> and the the only time he doesn't bark is whenever his owner, his dad, whatever you want to call him, is here and has uh-huh. him right in the room. Like, I mean, to be to be fair, like the dog has some degree, obviously, I think, of separation inside. It just doesn't like being uh, right. left alone where people aren't. And I probably would have let him come in here and lay down, but the guy that owns the place I'm staying at says that he doesn't want the dog in any of the other rooms. So I'm like, cool, your house, your rule, fine. Your casa, your rules, so muchacho. It's, it's, real, it's real fun when it's real fun when Koa gets into one of his, I see everything moving and I'm going to bark at everything <laughs> at 9, 10 o'clock at night when I'm trying to go to sleep because I have you to know. wake up. And there is there is no amount of getting him like a dog. It it just doesn't happen. Like you can call his name and he might be quiet for the that next sucks. five seconds. Like Ugh. anyway, yeah. it is what it is. But anyway, no, Elaine, Elaine is like a real person in this sense because you know people are you know some. I would classify people as some of them are your friends, right? They're the people who do the fewest number of things you find annoying and therefore you appreciate their presence. Bold of you to okay. assume I have friends. You got at least two. Ayo. Uh, 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 uh-huh. Uh. Uh-huh. So that's true. You know, I but mean, neither of is, them are like, here right now, but you have at least two who, who are not <laughs> our friends. The people who, every time we talk to them, they go, they say some bullshit. And you're like, what are you talking about? Oh my, shut up. I'm sorry, and, the wheel of time is what? That's how it is with people. I'm sorry, what? the wheel of time is what? <laughs> awesome. I will slap the awesome. stupid out of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, so in this case. You're not just wrong. I, I you're actually stupid. appreciate the fact that we have a character who is not, you know, we don't have a thousand characters in this story that everybody loves every character. And I'm grateful for that because yes. you're not supposed to love every character. If you loved every character that creates a, well, it creates I a it, love it just, vacuum. It just, to me, that's a, and an that aspect is of this story that I love. Yeah. <clears throat> to me, that's an aspect of this story that I love. And agree. So that's why, you know, when people say, what characters do you hate in the wheel of time? I have a really difficult time with that question because Oh, I don't. There are plenty of characters I hate, but well, exactly. I hate them because of how they behave. Yes. <laughs> There's none that I actually sit there and well and not none. There are a very, very, are very, very, very small handful where I stand there and I say, No, no, no. I hate this character because they do un uh Yeah character like things exactly the vast majority of them i hate because they do stupid things that are exactly part of their character they're just stupid well and that's and that's the thing is you know we talk about all the time the wheel of time we have several thousand named characters in the story and let's discuss the mastery of robert jordan who wrote a 15 book series with several thousand named characters and all of them are true to their own characters. Pretty much. That's a, that's a big call out. Oh yeah. That's huge. Because, you know, there are so many stories like even, even star Wars and Avengers and these other really big stories. People will look at them and go, that was so out of character for that person. And mm, and sometimes and they'll hold to that and they'll say, no, I don't like that because it was out of character for that person. And the thing is, well, there was the outcry whenever the, uh, the edition of Captain America came out, you know, with the infamous screen cap of, of cap saying hail yeah, Hydra. Exactly. 
I mean, and so you have, well, and that turned out to be a fucking phenomenal comic. Right. Um, oh, and yeah. so, you know, so I think the authors were, you know, they did what they did best, and that is sell comic books. I mean, they wrote a damn right. good story. Um, in this case, Robert Jordan has several thousand characters, all of them unique. All of them have depth. All of them have personality. And all of them act consistently to that personality and yep. it, it's it's a it's a testament it's a an illustration of just how amazing an author he really is and yep. so you know when we talk about elaine and we talk about how important to the story she is and we acknowledge that i mean she's paramount to the story i mean you think about it she's the one who figures out how to make Teron Grayall. She's the Tyrion Grial maker. <laughs> like, and there were Tyrion Grial that were used in the last battle that were pretty damn important. Mm-hmm. This is true. No, and and I mean, like that is that is so that, um, small. That, that, that flat green of, stone dip. of the the contributions that Elaine has, but again, it's it's that's that's the point that I feel like is being made here and and i'll jump in with sort of my last thoughts on this as well sort of uh springboarding a little bit off of josh is that elaine like a number of other characters is taviran light she is never actually described as taviran um she right. is never stated as specifically being taviran but at the same time again there are taviran and then there are like heroes of the horn. Are all of them described as Taviran? I don't know, but I would imagine that not necessarily all of them are described as Taviran, but they're all incredibly. Uh, you cannot replace them. They are irreplaceable in the pattern that without Elaine. So many things fall through the cracks. And again, we're going to I'm probably going to say this about a number of characters. Um, And I'm sure that I've actually said it about a few of the characters that we've talked about on this show before. Uh, but in the end. It is a story and it Robert Jordan is a master and he does do an amazing job of writing believable characters that also have a role to play. And Elaine right. has a number of them and she is always in character. I don't actually truly feel like she falls out of character once along with basically all of the main sort of cast of characters of the wheel of time. And that, well, again, I am with Josh as far as I don't always like Elaine. She makes mistakes. She says dumb things. She does dumb things. She has this, idea that she has this plot armor because of prophecies which is super dumb all of these different things are flaws but yes. at the end of the day if you have an unflawed character i don't believe it it's one of the reasons that exactly. i think superman is stupid yeah. and no it, again it, I, and there's I, a whole syndrome around that superman syndrome. right it's like exactly oh, yeah. and elaine very much does not have that because absolutely there are scenes where she confronts matt about tylen and she's so wrong she gets captured by the black aja and she thinks she's going to be fine because of her babies and she is so wrong she wants to be on an adventure because she's been so cooped up her entire life. She has such yeah. Jasmine syndrome and she is so wrong. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, the important thing about Elaine is that every time she gets knocked down, she gets up, she gets knocked down yes. seven times. She gets up eight. Not good, not good. She gets knocked <laughs> down over and over and over again because of, her stupid decisions because of other people's stupid decisions because of plots against her. But at the end of the day, she is brilliant. She is powerful and she is well put together. And so, Agreed. I mean, I, I have to admit that as someone who has always very much seen themselves as a Randall Thor, 
I think she is best girl, which I know is not felt among all of the hosts here, and I'm not trying to suggest that everyone needs to feel that way, but to me, Elaine is best girl. And those are my last thoughts. Hmm. Okay, I'll see you. Cool. So, I'd like to end this episode on a slightly different note than how we normally do. Do it. So you had my curiosity, uh, Daniel. Now you have my attention. What? <laughs> Bringing it full circle. So Daniel, what what is going on in the life of Daniel? What what cool things have happened, or not? So whatever you want to talk about. What's what's going on? What's the future? Uh, short term look like for Daniel. You don't need to do like a five year. Oh plan. sure. Uh, so. As some of you might know, just because you're regular listeners, uh, I was working at a cookie shop, which is still fantastic. Uh, And last I heard, which we've been getting somewhat reasonable, sorry, regular updates um, as far as the the status of that. Uh, I COVID-19 is all exciting and I'm getting unemployment right now because I was sort of terminated in all but name. Well, sorry, not in right. all but name, only in name, right. uh, from the cookie shop to go ahead and get yeah. that. Um, and so I am looking forward to more episodes of this podcast because I always thoroughly enjoy talking to the two of you. Um, and also getting back to work because it actually looks like California, especially with the testing that they've been doing, is looking to go into phase two. <laughs> And I don't know if the restaurant that I was working in will actually reopen during phase two, as far as like reopening some places just for pickup and whatnot. Um, We may actually end up waiting until phase three, Uh, but I'm excited to go back to work and finish up my training and excitement about baking cookies and making people happy. Um, And also talking to you guys, making some stickers getting some spread shirt swag. That is the current plan oh, that Daniel right. is on. I love How about it. yourself, Josh? Nice. What did... <sighs> I, how you, know how what, you feeling? How you doing? I have been... Joey doesn't share. Extremely food. fortunate. I mean, I know there are some out there who are having a difficult time with it. And, you know, it, it, it sucks and it's a difficult time. And I cannot stress enough how, how fortunate I've been and how grateful I am to the powers that be for, you know, the situation I find myself in. Um, Lockheed Martin is my employer and they've been absolutely amazing. Um, you know, they've coordinated, you know, remote work They've coordinated, um, you know, all kinds of different things to help us make sure that we can meet our deliverables to the government and to our different customers around the world um, and still, you know, be safe and and be taking care of things. And, and as a result, you know, that's allowed us to do things like, uh, you know, just leave a nice tip for someone at the coffee shop or yeah. travel the state. Doing contactless delivery of Girl Scout <laughs> You know what? No, I mean, that's part of it. You know, I, I'm a lot of people are, you know, and, and I don't mean, I'm not saying this to be like, you know, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, but I mean, I, a lot of people of are having a really difficult time right now, but I'm, yeah. I'm able to be like, okay, what does my Girl Scout troop need? Okay. What does my yard need? Okay. What do other people like? I've, I'm able to sit down and think about the things that other people need. And, you know, like, uh, you know, my wife's rock shop, she's, she's doing different charity events and things like that. So there's a lot of things. I just feel very, very fortunate. And so I'm looking forward in the next few months, I'm looking forward to, you know, obviously continuing along with the podcast, working with you guys to take it to the next level, to give our listeners that good, good. (laughs) Like we should, should, you know, I'm saying, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm super digging the second year anniversary planning phase. Oh, 
so excited for October, and we've got to figure out what we're going to do for that. We, we need, need to get we that need done, to start dude. On that. Remember, a I, like at the one year anniversary where we were like just about at that time was also <laughs> when we got <laughs> the, the week before no, no, deciding no, what we're gonna do. Around that time, we were also hitting a thousand followers. Yes. And now, like at the two year, oh, yeah. we very yeah. well may hit like three thousand, four thousand. Who knows? We are just Ugh. to give you guys an update on Twitter. We're at. 2,184 followers as of this moment. Ugh. Fantastic. Realistically, I think we might hit two. If if I mean, we might hit three if we're yeah, lucky, we, sorry. I was about to say, we done did two, son. We, we done, done did. did two. It done but, happened. You know, uh, for the next few months, no, and- you know, I'm looking forward to getting, uh, you know, getting a bit of a routine back in place and, uh, you know, yeah, so that's that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of where my head's at right now. And as as much as I don't want to sound pandery well, or anything like that, uh, Josh, fantastic. I it could not happen <laughs> to a more deserving person. Aww. Let me just let me just throw that out there. Whether <laughs> you actually believe me or not, <laughs> it could not happen to a more deserving person. Thank you. I very much appreciate that, Andrew. How you feeling? Andrew, why don't you cap this off for us, buddy? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, as most of you that have uh, listened over the last couple of weeks, uh, no, uh, I left the military uh, not necessarily by choice. Uh, actually, not at all by choice, <laughs> but whatever. They can, they can eat their bag of dicks whenever <laughs> life gives it to them. But... Um, not the military in general, but the leadership of my unit at my base. So don't don't take that the wrong way. Uh, but I spent four and a half months, well, one full one month truly unemployed, and three and a half months employed, but not I remember employed. That whole thing. Um, it was a we have a job for you, we have a start date for you, oh. and every time we got within two to three weeks of it, it was oh, it, it's been delayed two weeks. It's been delayed two weeks. Which, on um, one hand, we and, all all uh, like understand Josh said about being... as far as like shit got weird at the beginning of this year, but at the same time, yeah. like fucking guys, get your shit together. But it it got delayed the first time before before the virus became a Correct. big thing in the states. Yeah. Like it it's, it got delayed get the first time before. Get your shit together. Come on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of my things. Don't don't advertise a, a position that you're not ready to pull someone in and have them start working within like a, a very reasonable amount of time, like oh, a yeah. month max. Um, if you're advertising jobs and you're not going to put somebody to work within a month, Basically. go fuck yourself. Um, because that's that's just fucked. Um, don't tell somebody they have a job and then just keep kicking them down the line. Uh, because uh, I had enough women do that to me <laughs> growing up. I don't need a oof. fucking employer doing it. Uh, as an adult, big oof. But um. But just like Josh talking about how fortunate uh, he's been and how lucky he's been, uh, I recognize that I am too. Because not only am I able to work on site, I don't even have to remote work, but much like I'm able to work during this whole uh, pandemic ordeal. I actually got a job in the middle of this ordeal um, that required me to move about five and a half hours uh, from where I was, about 250 miles or so. Um and the end when this episode comes out uh when it posts i will have completed my third week yeah. in the new job and i'll get my first full week's nice. worth of paycheck um because the first week i worked um the first day of the week i didn't work because they fucked up and got me in the system a day late so i had to start a day later um so but i'm learning a ton a ton of stuff at work i'm really enjoying it um uh i'm a field services technician desk side specialist whatever you want to call it um basically tier 2.5 tier 3 tech support um and it, it's it's just been a lot of fun learning a, a bunch of stuff uh going through and actually imaging computers combined with doing a lot of hardware troubleshooting and rep- uh, component replacement um learning how to uh bypass uh bitlocker um for those of you that don't know, that's uh, Windows oh, kind of flagship encryption software. Is what it is. Um, 
truth. It's a pain in the ass whenever you're trying to do things the simple way, but you can't because you can't drag and drop files in and out of an encrypted drive. Um, which is, I mean, it's the way it's designed, and right. like I, I get it, but um, and it only took until this past Monday, Tuesday, to get my first. Uh, I'm too important to have to wait. Uh, client or customer. Oof. Um, so my favorite be, being the secretary people. for a commanding officer does not does not make you being a secretary for a commanding officer that especially not the base commanding officer does not make you a VIP. So, uh, the 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 skinny of it is if you have shit on your computer that's so critically important that you can't stand to lose it, you should probably <laughs> fucking back it up instead of bitching at it and being like i need my data i need a computer i need this i need that what you need to do is back up your fucking shit you fucking entitled you karen yeah um (laughs) i actually have to go into work an hour i work into into work an hour early in the morning to deal with this person oh yeah um to put in perspective uh her her integrated graphics card went out and her first thing was, well, can't you just replace the gra- can't you just re- uh, replace the video card? And we're like, that's not the way it works. Well, why not? Because it's fucking not <laughs> like it's just not the way it works. Um, and so we ordered the, a replacement motherboard for her machine. And the day we ordered it, like two hours later, she calls. She's like, oh, the the military IT, uh gave me another computer for me to use and, sa- and said I can keep it. Uh, y'all will just have to transfer the data. And I'm like, <laughs> don't tell me I have to transfer your data. I will if I can, only because you couldn't back it up when uh, before you brought it in. Um, because you're a moron that doesn't back up data and your video card went out so you can't see what anything's doing. But it's... The job has been a lot more fun than it's been annoying. Um... But in even more positive news, uh, because I need my laptop and stuff, my dad is actually going to drive some stuff I need up here this coming Friday, which me going in early tomorrow and having to stay late yesterday means that I'm able to get out of work two hours early Friday. Um, I'll be riding back with him back down to Columbia, um, South Carolina, spending the night and then hopping on the motorcycle and riding it all the way back up here. So. That'll be super dope. Um, here's to hoping that the, uh, I guess you want, if you want to call him the landlord's dog, doesn't decide that my motorcycle is his new fire hydrant. Um, cause there's not, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I murder, I would murder somebody <laughs> for pissing on my bike. Um, As you should. Yeah. Uh, you don't, you don't mess with a man's Harley. You don't mess with a man's bike, period. Um, but if it's not a Harley, is it really a bike? I, I mean, yes, um, but okay. It's 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 subjective. People like their crotch rockets or whatever, and it's fine, whatever. And that's fine. Like Personally, I appreciate you with and your wrongness. It's my it's my it's my own my own preference. You cannot say I'm wrong about loving Harleys over crotch rockets. Kawasaki can kiss my nuts. Um, <laughs> but that's just me. That's yeah, just that, me. That is just you. Um. Yeah, fucking crotch rockets annoy <laughs> that the shit like out of me. That sounds like a personal problem. You know who else hates? It sounds like a fucking bumblebee rockets? going by on the road. Elaine. She. Hates I that. doubt it. <laughs> no, I bet she would be totally me? down with the crotch rocket. A fucking show wing, just like. Maybe okay. Maybe young Elaine would drive a crotch rocket, but. I would say that as she gets older, she would understand the importance of a nice cruiser. Maybe a scout if she wants to feel a little edgy. Hey, Josh. Um, Josh. But then when she gets really no old, no one invited she's you into go this full conversation. Lame and drive no, a gold. Stop. Stop. You know, she's going to. Fucking gonna totally... goings can eat a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Andrew and I can no. agree on this particular <laughs> thing. <laughs> She Andrew likes Harleys. I like crotch rockets. Yeah. Gull wings can eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> the big giant windshield on the That's front. just a car with extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Gold wings are the mentally challenged kids that say that yeah. I have a bike. <laughs> it's it's like driving a car if a car was missing. No, you pieces. have a car that barely survived oh, a chop shit. shop. Yeah. It's a car that barely survived <laughs> a chop shop. I'm sorry, did you spend $35,000 on a car that you can die in? <laughs> Great. Nice job. Uh, or those fucking uh, those prowlers that have got two wheels in the front and one in the back. Uh, don't even. Just We're not talking about that. But Elaine, guys! So, as far as future, as far as future, like, I'm, I'm looking forward to obviously continuing doing episodes. I'm looking forward to the two-year anniversary uh, though we we have a couple ideas of of things to do oh, or things we want to do, shit out. Um, yeah, we just got to get it all hammered out and figured out. And of course, we will notify uh, everybody on Discord first because Damn you guys sweet. have earned it. True that. Um, if you're not in our Discord, it might be worth joining it. We've seen a couple people joining over the last couple days, uh, which is awesome. As always, because uh, that's more people to talk right. about all the time with. Um, those of you worried about being spoiled, um, in general, most of the open forums are spoiler free. Uh, the places to be careful, there's a spoiler specific channel uh, and then the Wheel of Time memes channel. You know, obviously the memes come from any point in the series. So uh, just if. If you're if you're already on Twitter, you know you have to be cautious. And if you're already on Twitter, you probably already have ninety percent of the series spoiled True. for you anyway. But just the the nature of the beast. True that. But True that indeed. But yeah. But I'm I'm excited to see um where where the show goes. Um might start kicking around the idea of after the after the two year anniversary starting each year as a season on Ooh. our hosting platform. I think that, that could be cool. So, you know, that would mean that after the two year, we go into uh, season I two. I like it. Oh, the yeah. the TV show so. buff in me wants this to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Full we can do announcements. That. You getting them here first. I mean, as it should be. Regular listeners should absolutely get things first. It's true. Live listeners so, should get and one of our live listeners earlier. their smack to answer your question. My Harley doesn't do that because I'm smart enough not to hit a <laughs> fucking car on my bike. I was I was kind of wondering what that was trying to say. Cause like on one hand, great, but on the other hand, like don't. <laughs> oh shit. If I had the balls to try to do like wheelies and shit, which I don't because I'll I uh love my bike too much to risk damaging it like that then yeah it could definitely pop up the way it's supposed to or not supposed to oh i believe that the show body way i believe that my and it also doesn't have a massive fucking windshield that goes straight into the visor the helmet i'm wearing and trying to decapitate me (laughs) um because I'm not a pansy, so I don't need a massive windshield. So a little windshield tonight, what is have we, enough. What have we learned tonight? That's 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 throwing shade. I have like a little two inch little lip windshield that just goes right above the front fairing. As it should. That's all I have. Oh And I'm like six foot two, so it doesn't even do anything for me. Like the wind God, still hits Andrew, me straight. You in the know face, how so. er, a little bit earlier we were talking about a little bit of a difference in opinion about bikes. We're on the same page again. I don't even know sure. what we were fighting about because God, the amount of on the same page we are is so high. What's the, what's the point of having a bike if you're going to block right? all the wind with a windshield? You might as well right? just get back in your car. Amen. Agreed. Dress for the dress for the now, slide, to be fair, not if the you're ride, one of those but like... windshield as if you're never going to hit anything ever. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Every one of those that somehow has a windshield that you can carry with you and you, you only put it on for rain like that, I I, I still don't acknowledge it, but it's yeah, more it's understandable more of a thing than just having one. The second it stops raining, you better be unbolting <laughs> that shit while we're going down the road. And you better not lose a fucking bolt, dude. Uh, All right, well, what did we learn tonight? We learned tonight that Elaine is actually pretty cool despite being pretty lame sometimes. We learned that a lot of different people... Are working on a lot of different things to make Tarman Gaiden a success and humanity's survival assured. 
Truth. We've learned that Elaine yeah. rides different motorcycles throughout the different phases of her life. She does. As we she do. starts on a crotch yes. rocket and settles on a Harley later. Does that make her a dude? Bro? I would say she starts on like a gold wing. Her... Like, well, she doesn't start on a gold wing. Like, she has a crotch yeah. rocket for a while. And then uh, around the whole Thailand episode, she switches to a gold wing. <laughs> Dude, Thailand. But the point is, and then she j- Thailand then she is a gold wing. Thailand's oh, yeah, a fucking say, scooter. She got, a, she got a, some <laughs> dumbass moped. The fucking moped. <laughs> Nobody likes Not moped. Even a good moped. The only reason Shade. you have a moped. Shade. The only reason you have a moped. The only reason you have a moped is because you have a DUI and you can't drive a car right. anymore. Dude. Oof. If no any of our have listeners moped. have a moped, we take we do not take that back. <laughs> Hashtag deal with it. I, I know I know a guy. It'd be hilarious <laughs> if like we just got a bunch of comments like, actually, you're right. I have a moped because I got a DUI. Like, how'd you know? I knew a guy because you have a in, moped uh, in Georgia, and he was a good guy, uh, super awesome guy, and he was in my squadron. He was in okay, Trump unit, but he was good. He was very he was very good. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of smart people uh, think he's very good. No, but... Um, Are you doing the hands? Because if you're not doing the hands, it doesn't count. Oh, I'm do- of course I'm doing the hands. Good. They landed down in Iraq, uh, and they took an RPG, right? And he got he got some uh, injury from the, uh, the, the blowback on that. And it was... Uh, no, it wasn't the shrapnel. It was the... Um, yeah, it was. Oh, he the, just got concussed. Concussive blast. It like blew out his eardrums. Oh, um, there was fire, you know, so it, he caught fire. Like it was, it was a pretty nasty deal. Um, yeah, thunderbolts and lightning. All in all, very, it came very out very fortunate. But when he came back, oh, wow. you know, they said, "You've got, you've got some, you know, brain matter that's that's dead, and we need to remove it." And so they went in. They did brain surgery. They removed it, and uh, they said, "Oh yeah, by the way." you know, your driver's license is revoked. You can't ever drive again. And this dude, he's like, well, fuck you. I'm not going to not drive. And they were like, look, just please don't be, you know, don't argue with us about this. You can't drive. You don't have a driver's license. If you get pulled over, like that's driving without a license. That's really bad. Please don't do it. And he said, fine. And so he went out and spent, God, I don't know probably fifteen twenty thousand dollars on one of those friction stick hydraulic lawn mowers and drove that <laughs> <laughs> because it's not a vehicle that requires uh, a a uh, a driver's license and so he'd go on the sidewalk and he'd be driving down the sidewalk and once a cop pulled him over was like what the hell are you doing he's like i'm mowing people's lawns <laughs> what he was doing he'd go down to the convenience <laughs> store and buy like a 24 pack of beer and go back home one of the coolest guys I've ever met. He was awesome. So that's that's the uh, bit. Make of my way downtown, lawn and fast faces here. passing. I'm beer bound. But I I want to say thank you to everybody for listening to us. Indeed, um, you guys are what makes this show amazing. We love you. We love having you. We love that you listen. And you should be stoked for the next episode because right. in the next episode. We start writing a serious, serious, serious I wrong. Love that has been Lamp. the fandom has been tainted by just lies and I'm, deception I'm and propaganda. And we're gonna, gonna write right that now. wrong. We're gonna address men as a lamp. We're, I we're love lamp. We're no, we're gonna address this. how men is not a we're lamp. Done. The black tower will speak. All right, moth boy. Truth. So, and hopefully, uh, I don't like spending four episodes on one character. Um, not say, I, I think there are plenty of characters that deserve it. I don't think any of us like talking about the same topic for literally a month's Honestly, worth of episodes. Honestly, our next character um, who is writing the wrong might end up being four episodes. But we'll see. We'll see. We eh, will could be, see. Could be, but... We will. So while that while the whole uh, lamp gate thing is still in everybody's mind, uh, we w- we want to talk about that and and write that egregious offense, set some people straight though we may not call them out by name. I'm not saying we won't, not saying we will. Um, just depends on the taint and what we feel at the time. There's a good chance we won't, but 
just because that's petty and and we are whatever. we are above petty. Um, Sometimes, <laughs> most of the time. Speaking for myself, most of the time. Yeah. But we'll we'll be addressing that starting uh, next episode, barring any like serious burst of inspiration. Sure. But y'all y'all can count on that. You can Indeed. bank on and, it, buddy. And to yeah, be fair, thank you very much. For does anybody know what that quote's from? Us, uh, I I don't. I don't actually know what that was from. Ooh, Hancock. It's a good, good movie. movie. I actually really enjoyed that one. The one and only time, the one and only time I ever remembered anything Nancy Grace ever <laughs> decided to speak about. Uh, Go fuck yourself, Nancy. But Nancy thank you very much for joining us. I. Uh, Definitely come on down. We've talked a little bit about our Discord already. Uh, if you want to go ahead and give us feedback, we're always open on Twitter at, at Tower Podcast. Uh, we're always open on email at the Black Tower. Sorry, not the Black Tower Pod at gmail.com. Um, as well as, you know, call us out on uh Instagram, all of that different stuff. We pay attention to literally all of it just about all the time. Um, if we don't immediately get back to you, it's probably because we're laughing at your response or actually <laughs> forming a solid response, depending on whether it was good or dumb. Um, but we love all of you so much. Uh, we really appreciate those of you who joined us for our live episode, um, as well as those of you who join us for regularly scheduled Friday episodes. Um, nice. So definitely come down, talk to us, engage with us. Uh, honestly, again, we would be doing this without you, sort of, just because we like talking to each other. But at the end of the day, you are what we do this for. Uh, and if you have a problem with it or you want to see more of something or anything like that, please reach out because we would love to hear what you have to say. Could not. I've said it. But also myself. keep in mind that you're not paying that with few exceptions, you are not assisting. In, well, you, with no exceptions, you are not paying our True. personal bills. So <laughs> if you're not fucking me, feeding me or financing me, then kind of is what it is no oh, but we 100%. still value your opinion so definitely reach out and tell us whatever you think good bad yeah the good the and bad let the me ugly. be clear your feedback um, is important to us we may never actually implement your feedback but it is still important to us you guys are just you guys are just calling it out right now <laughs> it's true it's I love it it's that kind of wednesday it. I mean, it's it wednesday it my dudes it is it's it's wednesday my dudes <laughs> You can sponsor me not cussing an entire episode by paying for my electricity <laughs> no, bill. You know I, I will. Mean, I will uno the shit out of an episode. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, but you know what though? Uh, as as my compatriots have said, we do appreciate you guys. We love you guys um, so much that so we've gone to the work to make sure that we're loaded on numerous different platforms. We're loaded right. up on Podbean, uh, Spotify, iTunes. Um, just to name a few, Google, Google podcast, podcast, YouTube, Apple. Oh wait, iTunes. you already said iTunes. Yeah. Though. But no, but the thing is, is this is pod bean, get the pod bean app. It's actually it pretty actually dope. Pretty great. We, we love what we do, um, because it gives us an excuse to talk about the wheel of time, but we, well, <clears throat> excuse me. We like what we do because it gives us a chance to talk about the wheel of time. <laughs> we love what we do because we get to include you guys in it as well. So Truth. thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a fan of the Black Tower. You guys are the best. Awesome. Enjoy. So what he done did all say. of us at the Black Tower, from to all of you out there, wherever you are, I have not been paying attention. I have been paying attention a little bit, but also <laughs> missing plenty of things. And I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> no, but seriously, these have been your hosts, Josh, Andrew, and Daniel. We love you so much. Have a lovely rest of your day. And in case we don't see you again, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.